Folks, today we're gonna to talk about Roth conversions because they are all the buzz. So let's talk about the why and the how, and then in part two, we'll talk about the pros and the cons. What's up guys, I'm Jeff Montgomery and welcome to Tax Planning on the Whiteboard. Just a reminder, if you like what you hear and you want more Whiteboard videos, just click that subscribe button. Quick disclaimer guys, this is not specific information to anyone watching the video. I want you to use this information as general education only. Please do not implement any strategies you see or hear on this video without talking to your financial professional first. So what is a Roth conversion? In its most simplest form, a Roth conversion is moving money from a traditional pre-tax IRA account into a potentially tax-free Roth IRA account. As a side note, some 401k plans will allow in-plan conversions to a Roth 401k, but check with your plan. Most folks, when they retire, will roll over or complete a direct trustee to trustee transfer from the 401k to an IRA. Once it's in the IRA, they may then create a Roth conversion strategy. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? And for all practical purposes, it is very easy. Many custodians that hold your accounts can simply do this with the stroke of a key. So let's go to the whiteboard and sketch this out. So if we go to the whiteboard and we look at a Roth conversion strategy, okay, and you know, sometimes I hear people call it really, shouldn't you call it a traditional conversion strategy since we're converting from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA? It's popularly called a Roth conversion strategy. So let's kind of just stick with that language because I think that's what you'll see in publications that you see, hear, and read uh, out there on the internet. So we're gonna talk about a Roth conversion strategy. And again, in its most simplest form, we're taking money from a pre-tax traditional IRA account. So if we draw a bucket here and we say we have money pre-tax in a traditional IRA account. So what is pre-tax means? That means that you have put money in and received some type of tax deduction, or if you were funding into like a simple IRA, a SEP IRA, a 401k, a 403b plan, even a 457 plan, the popular retirement plans out there today, you had money deducted from your paycheck um, and that was before tax. So the remaining amount in your paycheck was taxed. So they call these funds pre-tax. Now, if you contribute to a traditional IRA and you're allowed to take a deductible contribution based on income, then the money you put into that traditional IRA, you would then deduct off your taxes that year as a IRA deduction, therefore making those funds pre-tax. Now, on the other hand, we have what's called a Roth IRA, and a Roth IRA is after tax, okay? So if you contribute directly to a Roth IRA, then you do not get a deduction on those contributions. Keep in mind, there are income limitations on contributing directly to a Roth IRA. However, you can open up a Roth IRA, not make a contribution, but you can actually do a conversion if you have an existing traditional IRA. And I mentioned in the intro, this may be possible with a 401k as well. Most people when they retire, however, they will roll over or directly transfer their traditional 401k to a IRA with an IRA custodian. Uh, if done properly, that is not taxable doing a direct transfer or a rollover, uh, non-taxable, uh, situation. And once it's in that traditional IRA bucket, you can then start to do Roth conversions. And what that would be simply do, doing is moving money from one account to the other. Now, when that takes place, depending on your individual circumstances, 
that may be a taxable decision. So we have to keep an eye out and say, hey, is this going to be taxable when we move money from a traditional account to a Roth account? And I say may because in some special circumstances, it may be possible to do that uh, with little or no taxes, depending on your other income sources. But why? Why would you want to do a Roth conversion? There are many reasons that you may consider completing a Roth conversion, but the number one reason is that you think tax rates may be higher in the future. You would rather pay taxes now at a lower rate than in the future at a potentially higher rate. This, of course, not only has tax implications for you, but also potentially for your heirs that may inherit your traditional IRA or your Roth IRA accounts. And by the way, that's another reason folks consider doing a Roth conversion while they are alive. Rather than having their non-spouse heirs, such as their children, inherit their IRA, and as of 2020, under the new SECURE Act, the so-called designated beneficiaries can no longer stretch out those distributions over their lifetime. In most cases, that is the rule. There are rare exceptions. They have to now empty the account within 10 years, accelerating those distributions and paying more taxes if, if left in the traditional IRA. If most or let's say all of it was already in the Roth account, it would still have to be taken out over 10 years by these designated beneficiaries, non-spouse. However, it would be all tax-free. And the smart ones would probably leave it there for 10 years and continue that tax-free growth compounded over that time. Just an amazing strategy. So if we go to the whiteboard and we sketch this out, this is what it would look like. Okay, so if we continue our discussion about converting money from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, we have that pre-tax traditional IRA located right here. And then let's draw another bucket over here that's gonna hold our Roth IRA. And it is simply, like I mentioned before, it could be you know, the push of a button from the custodian moving money from one account to the other account. Again, always be aware, that may be a taxable distribution from your traditional IRA. It will come to you in a 1099 and say a taxable distribution. Um, we also kind of have a general rule. Hopefully you have money outside of the traditional IRA to pay the taxes rather than paying the taxes from within the traditional IRA. Uh, but again, moving money from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA that you just recently opened uh, could be taxable, most likely will be. But once that money is in that Roth IRA, it is tax-free forever. It's tax-free for you. And also, as we just discussed, it's tax-free for your heirs. So the strategy could be, for some folks, is let's try to get as much as possible over time, keeping an eye on our tax brackets, have a strategy where we move money occasionally from the traditional IRA to the Roth and get as much in there as possible. Now, don't forget, at age 72, we have this thing called required minimum distributions. There are no required minimum distributions on a Roth IRA under current tax law. We don't know, that could change. On the traditional IRA, the year you turn 72 is when you have your first required minimum distribution. They'll give you a grace period to April 1st of the year following the year you turn 72. So kind of keep that in mind. However, Roth conversions can be done even if you are older than age 72. The little gotcha here from the IRS is make sure you take out your minimum distribution first. All funds coming out of your IRA after age 72 are first are considered your minimum distributions. So don't try to do a Roth conversion first and then take out your minimum distribution second. Once that money is in that Roth IRA and uh, you designate a beneficiary, typically you're going to designate a spouse as your primary beneficiary. Now, not in all cases, not everybody has a spouse in different circumstances, but if your spouse inherits that Roth IRA, 
then check out my previous videos. You can see that a spouse can treat that Roth IRA as their own. So that's an interesting uh, strategy there. Now let's say that we left the money to a non-spouse, all right? A non-spouse beneficiary. A non-spouse beneficiary is called a designated beneficiary. And this differs from a spouse beneficiary because a spouse beneficiary is called an eligible designated beneficiary. So this is just a designated beneficiary, not an eligible designated beneficiary. Now what's interesting about a designated beneficiary, in most cases, they have 10 years to withdraw the funds. I mentioned that earlier, 10 years to withdraw the funds. They have to have those funds out of that account by December 31st of the year after the owner's death. Very, very important. Um, again, if this money is in a Roth IRA, remember it is tax free in most circumstances. Make sure it's a qualified distribution. It would be tax free and they would have 10 years of tax free growth from the date that they inherited that account. Great planning strategy sketched out on the whiteboard. That's how that works. If this is a strategy that you want to employ, then the first step is to make sure you actually have a traditional IRA with money in it to convert to a Roth IRA account that you have opened. As a side note, there are traditional IRAs that have both pre-tax and post-tax monies in them as for an entirely different discussion and tax planning opportunity at a later date. If you already have both accounts open, it would also probably help if they are at the same custodian. For example, a TD Ameritrade or a Charles Schwab or a Fidelity holding both accounts. It can be done if they are not at the same custodian. However, it adds complexity and time to the process. I like to keep things simple. As I mentioned earlier, it's often as simple as hitting a keystroke and moving money from one account to the other. However, you can also transfer securities in kind into the Roth IRA account. This may save some transaction costs in placing trades, liquidating securities to cash, and then moving the cash directly to the Roth IRA. But both essentially do the same thing. Let's go to the whiteboard and I want to explain an area of confusion when setting up a Roth IRA. Okay guys, one area of confusion that I often run into is people get the terms conversion and contribution confused. So we have spent this entire video talking about conversions, converting from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. And that is different than a contribution. Okay, there are two different things and they have rules, right? So one thing that I get a question all the time is, hey Jeff, I'm no longer working. I, I'm not allowed to open up a Roth IRA, am I? And the answer is yes, you are allowed to open up a Roth IRA even if you're not working. However, very important, you cannot contribute to that Roth IRA unless you have earned income. That is very important to understand. Now, if you're married filing jointly and one spouse is working and it shows earned income because they're looking at the household together, married filing jointly, then you do have earned income and you can, depending on income limitations, we won't get into that today, you could contribute into a Roth. There are contribution limits as well that we're not going to talk about today. But I main point today is I want you to understand the difference between a conversion and a contribution. So even if you're not working, you can open up a Roth. Now, can you convert from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA if you're not working? Yes. Are there income limitations on converting from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA? No. So in other words, you don't have to be working to do a conversion. You don't have to have earned income to, a con to do a conversion. And if you do have earned income and you make in excess of the income limitations for a contribution, that won't affect you on a conversion. The main point to understand about a conversion 
is it's most likely going to be a taxable decision, so you want to keep an eye on your tax brackets. I mentioned earlier our tax code is full of gotchas, and converting money is considered income for you, and that could trigger other areas and other taxes, such as IRMA, Social Security taxes, on your Social Security income, uh, and various other gotchas in our tax code. So again, uh, be aware. Uh, if you uh, don't run out and do anything or any strategies on your own, talk to a tax professional, a financial professional, to make sure you understand the implications of completing a Roth conversion. It may or may not make sense in your specific circumstance. So that's it for this video. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jeff Montgomery, and this has been Tax Planning on the Whiteboard.